trolls. So now Democrats are hopeful with their slight edge in the Senate, with Vice President Kamala Harris acting as the tiebreaker if there is a 50-50 partisan split. Here to discuss the next stage of the Policing Act is David J. Johns. He is the executive director of the National Black Justice Coalition. So, David, you know, I, I want to start with a statement that you read so we could kind of peel back the layer since you're here for me to talk to you about it. You issued it from your organization in response to the passing of this act. It says in part, the bill as presented in the House is a great first move, but to truly be a beacon of hope for black lives that too often don't seem to matter in the eyes of our government, the U.S. Senate will need to make amendments that strengthen these protections even more. We want to ensure that the bill covers biases in policing that impact all of us. Okay, so let's talk about the first step and how to actually get to the root, because you're, there, there are layers to this, is, is what I'm hearing you say. The bill is part of it, but even if the bill passed the way that you think it should be passed, you're still saying that's just a first step. What else needs to happen? If you had to draw a timeline for the next few years, which obviously doesn't fix the entire problem, but what needs to happen in these next few years for you to actually believe that change is happening? Yeah, I appreciate the question. And I want to do some dreaming out loud, but I will point to the fact that there right now exists the BREATHE Act, um, a piece of legislation uh, that has been offered by a coalition of organizations who are members of and work every day in community, uh, often in the communities that are uh, most in need of resources and support that is not provided by police departments or police officers. Uh, and so I want to encourage folks to read that piece of legislation. Uh, it has been endorsed by um, congressional representatives Ayanna Presley, as well as Ilha Omar. Um, and, and it is something that should be included in this conversation about the police reform that is needed in order to move us toward a place where people can actually think that justice is applied equally to all. I struggle for a moment there because too often when this conversation is had, especially in the media, the word radical is used. Mm -hmm. uh, and in particular, I want to be clear that nothing about what we are demanding is radical. Uh, I, I think beyond uh, asking for justice in this regard or police accountability, um, uh, begging people to, to ask and answer the question of whether or not police officers who take an oath to protect and serve should be allowed to kill people. Is, is the debate that I would much rather be having than weakening existing provisions uh, of, the, of the legislation that was passed out of the House. Mm -hmm. What is your message to people who became newly aware of this fight, or maybe they understood it on a different level over this summer after watching this nearly nine-minute video of George Floyd? What do you say to them now that they are starting to see legislation? Maybe they'll think that maybe we don't need to protest as much or maybe things should change. How does this movement for equality, social equality and um, in, in policing especially, how does it look different or the same now that bills like these have some traction? Yeah, I really appreciate that question, Ashley. What I would say to everyone who is willing to listen is that there is so much more work to be done this current moment in the movement for Black lives, for civil rights, for the opportunity to live in an America where we truly believe in and exercise treating people fairly and providing everyone with the access to liberty uh, and justice uh, for all, uh, and all has to mean all. Uh, and in particular, I would remind people that last June, uh, which for me will be a June that I will never forget for so many reasons, uh, in particular because of the, uh, the amount of, of Black blood uh, that was shed, uh, was a watershed moment, but is indicative of things that happened in so many communities throughout this country every single day. Uh, the bill, rightfully so, is named in honor of George Floyd, uh, who was murdered, who was killed. Uh, we witnessed uh, him uh, uh, half an officer half his knee at the back of his neck for, as you said in the opening package, eight minutes and 46 seconds. And that same week, Tony McDade, a black trans man, was murdered by the Tallahassee Police Department. Uh, uh, so many people who uh, feel or felt at least last June uh, to, to, to uh, pick up books and adopt strategies to become anti-racist uh, might stop at uh, feeling like they've done enough. Uh, maybe if they've called and supported this bill, uh, or maybe they've had book clubs to talk about Kendi's book, um, or maybe they've donated to organizations like MBJC. All of those things are important, and there is so much more work that has to be done at the federal level, 
at the state level and at local and municipal levels to ensure that one, police officers have compassion as well as the capacity to do their jobs and to do their jobs in ways that don't result in people dying. Um, two, that city resources and state resources are used to address the too often unmet and ignored needs of communities that are vulnerable, black communities, uh, people with disabilities, LGBTQIA folks, and in particular, I wanna name the intersectionality means that some of us show up in all of those uh, categories or stigmatized communities. Uh, and then finally, that we have to sit in the discomfort of naming the things that make us uncomfortable, but that also make our country what it is. And too often, we see the vestiges of white supremacy and anti-Blackness show up in the encounters between Black folks, Black people, and police. Um, and I want us again to ask and answer the question of whether or not we believe that uh, Black lives actually matter um, and that our humanity should be protected, uh, especially when encountering police officers. David J. Johns, thank you for coming here, being honest with us, educating us. And you did it with the nice, gentle smile that made us want to receive all the information. So thank you so much for coming here and sharing your time with us. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. In the digital age, 